scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here According is going to Luke chapter 9, when you read verse 29, the Bible says, And as he prayed, the he being Jesus, he says, The fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistering. So you can pray a weak version of you to become a strong version of you. You can pray a carnal version of you to become a spiritual version of you. Prayer is powerful. Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. The Bible says, He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. First Thessalonians 5.17, it says to pray without season. In other words, be consistent. Are we together now? James 5 and verse 13, it says, If any man afflicted, let him pray. And then he gives us an individual who personifies the power of prayer. He says, the fervent and the effectual prayer of the righteous availed much. Then he says, Elijah was a, a man of like passions like us, but that he prayed earnestly that there be no rain for a space of about three and a half years. And then he prayed again. So he was able to shut the heavens and open the heavens in and through the power of prayer. Someone say prayer. Any territory that is not committed to the prayer ministry is the territory that will be cheaply given to the devil. Are we together? The Bible says, give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem as a praise. I sought for a man to stand in the gap that I would not destroy them, but I did not find any. There needs to be a fresh awakening even of the prayer ministry in our land. And that will happen in the name of Jesus. And the third, like we said yesterday, the third key that connects you to an experience with God is high level spiritual illumination. This is a kingdom that thrives on light. Light. Light represents knowledge and illumination. John chapter 1 and verse 5. It says, And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 that God made many lights, but he made two great lights, one to rule the day and the other to rule the night. Light always rules, I said yesterday, whether it is in the day or in the night. Hallelujah. The degree to which you sustain spiritual intelligence and high level spiritual illumination, that is the degree to which you will be open to the things of the spirit and even command power with God. There is a relationship between knowledge and dominion. You cannot walk in dominion in ignorance. So Paul was praying over the church in Ephesus in Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 15. He prayed and bowed to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, asking that they be filled with the spirit of wisdom and revelation. He said, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, amplified, says flooded with light, that ye may know. Knowledge is important. Very, very important. High level knowledge. When Satan came to Jesus, Jesus did not come to him saying, I fasted, I prayed, I'm a man of God. The very weapon that was used to, deceive, to defeat Satan was, it is written. John chapter 4, when you, I mean Matthew chapter 4, when you read from verse 4, Satan came to him and he said, it is written. It is only what is written that you know that will become your bailout system. If it is written and you do not know, you will still suffer. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. 
he says arise shine for your light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you the rendition of amplified says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you he says rise to a new light is someone learning so three keys that can help a man to have an experience with god number one genuine hunger number two a consistent lifestyle of prayer and fellowship with the holy spirit and then the third your passion and your search for knowledge now let's go to number two when you have an experience with god the next most important step as far as being empowered to be a faithful witness to the resurrection is concerned is you must understand how to walk by faith please write it down you must understand the law of faith in this kingdom the bible clearly tells us time and again four times in scripture that the just shall live by faith the first we have is in habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4 the just shall live by faith the second if you care is in romans chapter 1 and verse 17 the just shall live by faith the third is in galatians chapter 3 and verse 11 the just shall live by faith and the fourth is hebrews 10 and verse 3 the just shall live did i get that right please search it for me 38 hebrews 10 is that 38 yes 10 38 now the just shall live by faith four times in scripture and four prophetically is the number of balance are we together the just shall live by faith that means faith is not an issue of being a preacher it's more than even an issue of being a christian it is literally your lifeline it is how the economy of heaven operates please let me your attention because if you do not know how to walk by faith there is no guarantee that you will excel in life hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1 paul is mentoring the church and he begins to teach here's what he says now faith is he's giving a definition to the quality and the character of faith he says now faith is the substance of the things that are hoped for he calls it the evidence of the things that are not seen then he says for by it that faith the elders obtained a good report verse 3 says through faith we understand that the walls is the greek word aeons they were framed by the word of god we were not there but we understand through faith someone say faith let the devil hear you say faith it is important for us to understand that it takes faith to remain indomitable and to be able to subdue the cohorts of satan the vicissitudes of life first john chapter 5 and verse 4 first john chapter 5 and verse 4 it says for whatsoever is born of god the bible says hath overcome the world then it says and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith it takes more than sincerity to walk in victory you can be well-meaning you can be sincere you will still be defeated the bible is full of very innocent people who were victims of situations and circumstances in this world and in this kingdom it takes more than innocence to try you can be as well-intentioned as well mean and well-meaning as you may wish to but it takes faith what is faith let's define it very quickly what is faith i have two definitions here and please i want you to write them down if you can faith is the name given to the action we take based on our conviction of who god is and the integrity of his word faith is the name given to the action that we take the name given to the action that we take based on our conviction of who god is and then the integrity of his word is called faith in one word faith is obedience 
in one word faith is obedience faith is not knowledge faith is not believing believing is part of the equation of faith you can believe and yet not manifest faith are we together there are many 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 people who are believers but there are few people who are walking in faith i don't know if i used that example last year but even if i did let me repeat again two well-dressed gentlemen please come in fact three let's make it three come very quickly let's appreciate them as they come thank you may god bless you in jesus name you stand here sir just stand facing me please stand here sir you stand here sir now all of you watch just stand facing him here's your place now watch this i want to show you what faith is this is what you want to purchase hold this please this is god right here in our example call this breakthrough call this healing call this lifting call this whatever you want the whatsoever thing you desire are we together now now god has told you if you come to me i will give it to you this gentleman here is going to believe but not walk in faith but this one will believe and walk in faith let's see the difference this is the mistake that many continue to make in the house of god now i'm going to ask you the condition to obtain that please lift it up sir this is what you are looking for and the condition to obtain it is that you go and receive it are we together so i'm playing the role of the holy spirit and i've told you that if this is what you have the condition is to walk there keep saying you are going but don't go are you seeing him now he has believed me but he does not have it because he has not manifested faith he is not doubting me he knows that what i've said is right please keep talking sir look at him 2001 2002 2003 2010 2015 he is still here 2017 2019 he believes me and yet he does not have it because he has not fulfilled the condition now this gentleman shows up in 2020 and receives it and i said listen the condition is to walk there and go and collect it stand behind he's coming from the back this my man has been here for 10 years are we together now you come from the back the condition is do you believe me say i believe it go and collect it now hold on this guy will be angry and say but it's not fair god has been believing you and he says no it's not just about believing it's the one who works in obedience until the obedience factor is honored you are not walking by faith please go back sir give him the bible again i want to simplify the subject of faith there is nothing complicated about the subject of faith you can be this man right here or this man in this service i can assure you there are these two groups sitting here this is why many people get angry and frustrated why does god seem to honor certain people and then others remain this way i can tell you the same lord is rich unto all having the readiness to judge every disobedience the bible says when your obedience is complete so for instance if that is prosperity please lift it up sir and among the many principles that have been allocated for prosperity let's use two number one is giving number two is value and diligence if you are a giver you will have some measure of results but you'll be surprised that you will not be sustainably wealthy because giving is not the only key you are fulfilled one you will be having trickles of testimony but you are not valuable the bible says a diligent hand shall be made fat you have done one part of it well but you have not completed it so you find out that your financial life is epileptic and then this person now comes to fulfill everything he is a giver giving to the house of god giving to the man of god and then in addition he discovers his gifting and refines it now favor can work for him because there is a relationship between competence and favor 
are we together listen every time it looks like god is not answering you there is something in your faith equation you are not doing either there is bankruptcy of knowledge or largely bankruptcy of obedient action you can act in disobedience it is not faith faith is not just any kind of action it is obedient action if i ask this gentleman to come here and he walks away he is acting but not in obedience is someone learning god bless you thank you gentlemen may god bless you let's appreciate them please write this down if you desire to walk by faith you must understand the power of instructions that is found in the word of god and the power of obedience please write it these two things very important you cannot act in ignorance if i have not given you an instruction the difference between walking around and obedience is that one must be demanded for is that true without a demand being placed on it a madman is walking around you can't say the man is walking in obedience because nobody asked him to walk around but if i ask you to come and you are coming you are not just walking you are in obedience that means the foundation for obedience is knowledge of what god demands deuteronomy chapter 28 please from verse 1 and 2 deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 the bible says it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all that I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee Taraba high above the nations of the earth the next verse says and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord you see that there is a condition there to hearken to do Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 popular scripture that we quote about success it says this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth follow carefully it says but thou shalt meditate therein day and night you don't stop there that thou mayest observe to do is it in your Bible the purpose of meditation is so that you have comprehension you know the role that you have to play in committing God over that matter observe to do all that is written therein it says for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and thou shalt have good success you must find out what god has said concerning every area of your life and then obtain grace from god to walk in obedience you must find out what god has said when satan came to eve and adam in the garden the first thing he was interested in is what God has said because until Satan knows what God has said he does not have any ministry in your life he wants to know what God has said that becomes the basis of his making you walk in disobedience Satan cannot make you walk in disobedience until he knows what God has told you disobedience has no value until there is first room for obedience is that true until i give you an instruction to obey i cannot say you have disobeyed so the value of disobedience is derived from the potential for obedience is someone understanding tonight hear me believers hear me preachers hear me politicians hear me captains of industry there are no guarantees in life we live in a, a world that is obsessed with guarantees unfortunately there are no guarantees anywhere nobody promises you that you will start a church and excel no it takes faith for you to believe that i will start a work and then someone will come you can build houses in taraba here nobody comes to sign an agreement with you necessarily that you are going to find tenants in your house it will take you believing in god and taking that risk at the back end of every life of exploit is a risk let me spell faith for you tonight are you ready to learn the spelling of faith please write here is the spelling of faith r 
I S K. You are not in an English class. Let me spell it again. R I S K. That's the spelling of faith. Let's do it one more time. R I S. -K. Don't write that in Wayek or whatever, but it's just. <laughs> Next time you are spelling faith, don't spell it as F A I T H. That is English. When you stand before your destiny, that spelling will end you with zero. You need to understand faith as R I. Madam, what is the guarantee that six of your children will be great? R I. The only insurance is the integrity of God's word. We live in a world that is full of fear and obsession for guarantees. Putting burdens on men to do what only God can do. Can I tell you, if you will ever raise the dead, you must have the courage to stand before one. If you will ever build a house, you must have the courage to stand before an empty land. Even if what you have is 10,000 naira in your account. Waiting for guarantees will only waste your time. I speak to someone, the spirit of fear that has stopped you from moving. I rebuke that spirit now. Please sit down. There are many people who will never build a house giving flimsy excuses. All I have is 100,000. I have a plot of land. There are people who will never be able to make progress. I want to start the school. But what is the guarantee that students will come? Little children will come. Nobody had any guarantee anywhere. And what betimes anybody who puts his strength in a man. Hoping it will be guaranteed. Because by the arm of flesh, all of us as men are limited. It is the verdict of God about us. No exception whatsoever. They looked unto him and their faces were lightened. Are we together? Some of you, after this service, you should go and register that company in CAC. Where is the money? Start with what you have. The signs follow. They don't go before. I conquered the spirit of fear. In the name of Jesus Christ. Man of God, it's time to go and start looking for a land for the church. Apostle, but we've not done any launching. Who told you that is the way it starts? It comes by faith. Prove to God that you believe him enough. Hallelujah. A gentleman was getting married and he forwarded the list to my mail. I called him and I said, don't ever do that again. I deleted it. I said, if you cannot trust God, don't, don't, don't. Spiritual fatherhood is not a call to bear a burden of not listening to me. I've been preaching for a long time on faith. Don't you dare send any list to my mail. No. That's irresponsibility. Are we together? There are some of you here looking at me you are 40 you are 45 you are still in your parents homes get out of that place after this conference in the name of jesus christ can i tell you go and enter the one room like that no mattress no nothing take a step of faith god is a god of portions you are not the first to rise listen when we unnecessarily over pamper a generation will produce weak and irresponsible people i hope we're still friends let's spell faith one more time again ready one to go apostle is i know it's the will of god for me to learn how to drive but to stand on the road if you do not sustain the courage make your mistakes and let the car swing from left to right otherwise you will never be able to drive champions are not invincible people by default they were able to stand before the mouth let me tell you this one of the ways that god builds faith in us is to bring you face to face with what you are running away from i know you will not like what you just heard it does not happen all the time but one of the ways that God builds courage 
is to carry what you are running away from and bring it before you you can look at it long enough you will no longer fear it by the time the landlord tells you tomorrow if you don't pay that rent except i'm not the landlord you will be in prison there is a way you can pray and fast and all your uncles their numbers will be busy you will summon the courage for the first time to stand before the landlord and say sir i'm not irresponsible you will be surprised that that conversation may be what would trigger you getting a job but if you run away in fear someone is receiving faith to stand before certain mountains in the name of jesus christ hear me when mountains stand before you don't run also don't be too quick to fight you fight with knowledge goliath did not just run david did not just run to goliath but at least he stood there first there was a conversation and an understanding was established the people that do know their god they shall be strong and shall do You've heard my story about the first time we were going for a crusade. We didn't even have the money. We went for the crusade. And right there, the place we were staying, we had not paid for it. And yet I was, you know what it means for a preacher to be preaching and the people you are owing are also in the crusade ground. The sound, that you are, the sound system you have not paid for. They are hearing you shout about a God who is able to heal and watching miracles happen there. Who is the God that can take somebody out of a wheelchair, open blind eyes and cannot pay us our 150,000? What kind of a God is that? But it takes courage. Some of you today, it looks like you are in need, but tomorrow you will give to nations. In the name of Jesus. Some of you will set up foundations in Taraba that will be of international repute. I prophesy this to you in the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God hear me when you see people failing while they are taking action don't laugh oh, because you will bite your finger in shame mm. there is something called failing forward i always teach that if a plane is flying and you leave the the front seat and go back to use the restroom are you going backward the plane overall is moving forward even though inside the plane you are going backward so just because you are having momentary failures don't let the devil come and tell you man of god you you agreed for the ministration you stood there and all your rehearsals of your sermons and the verses just disappeared make the mistake there and learn come and stand before us and make the mistake at least we love you so we'll see you and say no problem you can than to disgrace yourself before the world in the name of Jesus, I shake unbelief. Someone pray one minute. Pray one minute. I shake unbelief. Every fear. Fear of being misunderstood. Fear of being controversial. I shake it in the name of Jesus. Be strong and of good courage. My guarantee is the word of God. My guarantee is the integrity of the word. Someone prophesy to your destiny in the name of Jesus. My beginning may be small now, but I decree and declare my later end shall be great. Man of God prophesy, ministry will not kill me. In the name of Jesus, I will rise and I will try. I will be an effective witness. In the name of Jesus, please sit down sit down just help those under the anointing we're about to pray shortly can i tell you behind every glory you see my dear people there is a story anybody run away from people who don't have a story of how they started i don't care who they are and can i tell you when you are mentoring people don't just show them the crowns show them the scars it is the scars that gives value to the crowd don't tell them you just bought your first car like that let them know you failed too let them know you prayed too man of god let them know you fasted too most people dishonor results 
because they do not understand the process that leads there oh he's just a bishop i'm sure god just made it happen aha uh -huh. that is the language of mediocres unfortunately our generation is full of these kinds of people you trivialize results and say you are just lucky this man how did he just write i'm sure god just showed grace really paul said i am what i am by the grace of god but he says this grace was not showered on me in that i labored more than ye all you are here in this meeting now I, I came in and i heard the gentleman giving a testimony i don't know if it was a dream or physically that he had to cross a river or something like that to come here i sat down and i said look the effort he will receive an impartation tonight and god listen god will change his life and in two years he will become a great man of god and someone and then someone will say you were lucky lucky to cross a river and come for a meeting if you don't like me i'm sorry or let me apologize now but i have to drum it into your spirit don't disrespect results when you see it results are testaments of endurance when god trusts you with honor trusts you with grace let the people around you understand the value and the price that came for that to happen are we learning so number one you must have an experience with god and then number two you must understand faith forever in your life if you are going to walk with god please hear me i'm seeing several people standing at outside standing you know such an overflow of people outside these people have a choice to be angry and go home but they made up their minds that whether they sit or not my destiny must change that is faith right there those outside shout hallelujah many years ago i was already being used by god and god was already helping me by the privilege of his grace but i remember traveling down to joss the late reinhard bonke was coming for a crusade and then i came down to joss i wanted to experience i had seen a measure of grace upon his life that i desired sincerely i would have said i'm also a man of god and remain there in arrogance and not grow I came for that crusade the first day I saw such a move of the spirit there were healings by the next day I said even though I'm a man of God I would drop all that title I must look for something to do to honor that grace when you are hungry bar nothing else distracts you I stood there on that crusade ground for six solid hours and you know his crusade you don't sit you stand I saw them wheeling people in wheelchairs and all of that and I pleaded I said please can you allow me let me also participate they said well there is a committee that has been trained I said whether I committee or no committee you don't know where I came from and what I'm looking for as I was pushing the wheelchairs I said Lord this is how it will be in my meetings I have honored one who you have helped like this Let me give you the last key because we have a lot to do fire is falling in this place hmm. the last key that controls commanding power in a generation and in a dispensation to be a witness of the resurrection is the place of spiritual empowerment oh please pay attention if you have been sleeping now is the time to wake up spiritual empowerment please give us psalms 89 and verse 20. psalm 89 and verse 20. may i please request that we read together we're reading from 20 to possibly 24. if you can see it projected let's read together one to read i have found david my servant aha uh -huh. with my holy oil have i anointed him with whom my hand shall be established mine arm also shall strengthen him the enemy 
shall not exact upon him nor the son of wickedness afflict him i will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him the last verse but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him and in my name shall his horn all because i found him and i anointed him can i tell you this in this world that we live in if you do not understand the ministry and the administration of the anointing the ministry and the administration of spiritual power you will not last i hate to be a bearer of bad news but the only language that the realm of the spirit understands is the language of power please journey with me for the next five ten minutes if you will as we explore the dynamics of the anointing the place of spiritual power god will open your eyes and afterwards we'll pray you came here sick be ready to wave that sickness goodbye in the name of jesus christ whilst you are seated i'd like you to pray one minute lord open my eyes let me see let me see Yeshua. Ah 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 Please pray young and old male and female hallelujah hallelujah story story once upon a time in my life i sat down and i watched sincere and well-meaning preachers preach the gospel with all their hearts and while i looked across the length and the breadth of the auditorium i could see and i could perceive sick people I could see and I could perceive people who were in desperate need for God to come through for them and respectfully speaking I saw these preachers wrap up their messages they said many wonderful things about God and I saw that it was true based on scripture but there was no performance and we shared the grace and left I saw the sick go back sick I saw the oppressed go back oppressed I would even see people cry while they spoke and yet nothing happened and I said what kind of a God is this who would not be able to show up in the midst of his people and turn the lives of people around and then later on I would see people who would who I knew either them themselves or their parents were involved in some kind of idolatry and I saw them returning with a semblance of results I said something has to be wrong let God be true and all men liars that desperation and hunger to understand the reason why it seemed like God did not show up in the midst of his people led me to a pursuit a journey that began with hours translated to days to weeks and to years to cut the long story short the Bible says, for everyone that seeketh, findeth. Finally, I found the key that the missing ingredient was the anointing. That many people had good messages. Preachers, please let us listen. Many people were sincere, integrity and character. And yet they lacked the spiritual wherewithal. Now, if I told you, for instance, physically, if I tell you now that I am thirsty and you do not have money in your pocket, you can sympathize with me and say, Apostle, I will do all within my power to make sure you have a bottle or a cup of water. Is that true? But whether you are able to purchase it, there's water everywhere, especially in a state like yours. However, the purchasing power is not there. So I can stand thirsty and watch shops and malls 
that have bottles of water and not be able to access it because the power to obtain it the healing you are crying for has always been there the breakthrough you are crying for has always been there the testimony that becomes a consolation to your christian experience has always been there but ladies and gentlemen midwifing your desires and their manifestation is the ministry of power if you cannot access the requisite level of power not just power arbitrarily power works like money if you are hungry and you have 10,000 naira, I think you have enough to be able to get you a good meal. But if you need a car and you have 10,000 naira, you have money, but not money enough to buy you that car. Some of us have tested power, but not enough to purchase the dimensions of spiritual reality that we seek. Man of God, hear me. You are a blessing to the degree to which you are able to access power. So much of it that you can now attend to the needs of God's people providing supernatural solutions as at when needed now you will understand Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 here's what the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power he says he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him it took more than being the son of God to heal and to deliver and to turn lives around. Are we together? Somebody say power. Every prayer request you have written there will require power for it to be solved. Do you agree with me? So the Bible says grace and peace be multiplied through the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ and so on and so forth grace and peace can be multiplied in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 where we looked at earlier it says but you shall receive power Jesus himself knew the necessity of spiritual empowerment and he told the disciples in one of the accounts tarry ye in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power hallelujah in Luke chapter 1 Luke chapter 1 and verse 34 Angel Gabriel comes to a young virgin by the name Mary and now brings her glad tidings that she would be carrying a son without knowing a man in the flesh. And this baffled her. And Mary said, how shall these things be, seeing that I know not a man? Gabriel replies in verse 35. He says, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. Is that in your Bible? And the power of the highest shall overshadow you man of god how will your ministry rise from where it is not right now to the place of prophecy the power of the highest shall overshadow you mama how will you be able to fend for 10 children now that your husband has transited to glory the power of the highest shall overshadow you until an individual has encountered the overshadowing of the power of god that person will do very very little for the kingdom you cannot be able to birth the purposes of god in the strength of the flesh it takes more than that i hope you know that when i talk about power i am not limiting it to just falling down and standing up i'm talking about the capacity to produce results that are beyond the realm of science beyond the realm of man it is only marvelous in our eyes if it is the lord's doing there are two reasons why we need spiritual power please write let me give it to us very quickly and then we'll begin to pray i already sense the power of god in this place number one the first reason why we need to be anointed and we need the anointing in ever increasing measures is to subdue the forces of darkness that continue to fight against our lives and our destinies please write the bible did not leave us in the dark as to the fact that we are not alone in this part of God's kingdom to subdue the forces of darkness that fight, that militate against our destinies, that militate against the purposes of God. Hallelujah. Please write it and look up. Do you know, provided you find yourself on earth 
haven't passed through the womb of a woman you are a potential candidate for an attack of darkness whether you are innocent or not even if you are jesus for as long as jesus landed here in this side of god's kingdom as a baby satan did not even spare him because he was born did you not hear that there was a cry in rama children from two years and below died simply because satan was looking for one person satan is that determined to destroy your destiny if it means him killing everybody who can help you to get you he will do it most people i don't mean to scare you but i have to be sincere with you most people do not know that this earth that we walk in the bible says for the whole earth lieth in wickedness who did i offend that all this is happening in my life ladies and gentlemen you do not have to offend anyone who will be more innocent than jesus yet he remained an object of satan's attack until he died man of god do you believe that the forces of darkness will watch you continue to win souls transform people turn drunkards into men of god turn prostitutes into women of virtue and hell will cross its hands businessman you think the devil will continue to watch you excelling and then helping the poor and the needy with the resources and fold his arms politician you think the devil will watch you continue to rise and make policies that better the lives of people oh no we need to wake up jesus said i will build my church but he says there will be one contender he calls it the gate of hell you don't need a prophet to tell you your life has always been under attack your life remains perpetually under the radar of darkness the bible says in john chapter 10 and verse 10 i hate to be the bearer of bad news but i have to tell you the truth it says the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy then jesus said i am come that ye may have life and have it more abundantly in the parable of the wheat and the tears he said while men slept the enemy came and planted satan is also a farmer you can go to bed and wake up with sickness that you did not remember having before you went another farmer has come to plant something hallelujah why do we need the anointing to subdue the forces of darkness that fight against our lives and our destiny psalm 66 verse 3 it says say unto god how terrible art thou in your ways through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves hallelujah many years ago i knew of a gentleman the only son of his mother true story he just finished and he graduated with a very good result he came to collect i think his statement while he was returning back on a bike one car just came and that was how he cleared that gentleman he died instantly don't tell me how can they lie sharia that is the plot of darkness to destroy that woman did you not read in your bible a widow called the widow at name all the men in her life who could support her the devil was taking them away her husband had gone her only son was about to go and jesus said no this is too much someone must get angry this night and say enough is enough enough is enough i cannot continue to watch the devil plague my body plague my ministry plague my business for as long as you keep giving excuses you empower darkness to, to destroy you hear me there are many champions and giants by prophecy in Taraba. Some of them today are in Gear Palace. Some of them today are somewhere else. The madman in Gadara had the destiny of an evangelist. The devil knew that that was an evangelist. And he caught him and bound him and hid him. And while that man was bound, 10 cities were under captivity. Because the evangelist anointed to bring them to Jesus was bound. As soon as Jesus released him, what of the woman the prostitute who was by the river that woman had the power help them please help that gentleman can i tell you the truth it is not only god who sees your destiny the realm of the spirit can see your destiny too ask moses ask jesus
the attack in your life is not just because you are an enemy it's because of where you are going and the destiny is connected to you please hear me tonight that attack is not just about you don't just blame your manager ah uh -uh. it's more than job it's more than politics it's about destiny you are the covenant keeping god you are the covenant keeping god Yahweh. I cannot begin to tell you the attacks and the things that have come to my life I always wondered why now I know every time Satan attacks you don't flatter yourself to think it's all because of you you are too small for that dedicated attention he's looking at something beyond you mama the attack is not about you it's about the womb that will carry the next prophet in Taraba the barrenness is not about your marriage you must find perspective to spiritual things politician the attack is not i don't care what political party that's not the issue the attack is not about you it's about something connected to you the day you come to give your life to jesus it's not only the preacher members who saw you the realm of the spirit saw you so what his father could not do what his grandfather could not do now he will be the one to lift up the banner of the gospel no we must fight him someone shout no way shout it again say no way hallelujah hear me taraba state every attack on your state is not about the state it's about the destiny let me tell you the truth satan is so busy he does not waste his energy for nothing when you find a dedicated coordinated attack even military intelligence and secular intelligence tells us when you find a thief roaming around a man's house he is aware that there is something there a thief will not be climbing a fence that is so high only to pick 10 naira that labor is too foolish for that amount he said the thief cometh not but for to steal that means before satan attacks you he must verify whether there is something to steal there is something to kill so his attack to your life is already a sign that there's something god put in you that you do not even know yourself woman of god the fight for your ministry is not just about you it's because of many women in taraba who your ministry is going to liberate men of god i want us to pray you see the attack on pastors children and all these things is not just because the parents are irresponsible satan knows that there is no other way to present such a bad light to the gospel than the minister himself having those stigmas I know some of the most responsible parents and from nowhere a child will get up and start doing something that is a shock to everybody but in the name of Jesus anything that does not name the name of Christ I came by this mantle tonight over Taraba over your life he must give up tonight in Jesus name sit down the second reason why we need the anointing why we need spiritual empowerment in our lives is to help us fulfill our god-given assignments and advance the purposes of the kingdom please write to help us fulfill our god-given assignments and then to advance the purposes of the kingdom the second reason for spiritual power to fulfill our god-given assignments and then to advance the purposes of the kingdom it takes more than a desire for evangelism for the purposes of god to be frontiered 
it takes more than discovery of your call and your potentials for you to head forward there must be the backing of heaven the investment of god's jealousy upon your life otherwise you will not go forward mm -mm. hallelujah there are many people here who have discovered their place in life politically in ministry in business but the power and the force to push it is not there watch this if my assignment please i want you to look at me lend me your attention if my assignment is to carry this pulpit divine assignment now to carry this pulpit from here to here knowing that this is my assignment is only step one but whether i have enough energy to now carry it i can remain here forever for all my life and not be able to lift it i am not in ignorance about god's expectation but the power to make it happen hallelujah again with all due respect can i charge those in governance and politics it takes more than a good heart to be able to bear the purposes of God. It takes, it takes a dimension of spiritual power. The ushers are collecting the prayer request. Please, you don't have to be distracted. Just gently pass it to the last person if you can. Nobody's going to read it. And if you are still writing, do feel free to write. Nobody reads it. We're praying and then it will be burnt. Hallelujah please hear me doctor it will take more than mbbs for you to advance the kingdom of god have your own hospital and bless people in taraba you will see the limitation of the knowledge of this secular system if god does not help you hallelujah by the way let me tell you that every request that finds itself here i want you to start waving it goodbye in advance because as far as the god of heaven is concerned you've had the testimonies you will never have to write it the second time again are we together there are two principal channels for receiving the anointing let me wrap up now two principal channels for receiving the anointing channel number one you can receive the anointing directly from god through encounters please write it down you can receive the anointing directly from god through encounters directly from god through encounters in acts chapter 10 and verse 38 the bible tells us the person who anointed jesus it was not john the baptist that anointed jesus it was not some prophet somewhere that anointed jesus the anointing of jesus came directly from god how god anointed jesus who anointed him god how god anointed jesus so god can give men direct encounters to anoint them you've heard of my testimony many of you my encounter with the lord jesus unfortunately we live in a time today where you know people just claim they have met jesus they've gone to heaven and you cannot see the evidence of that encounter it's not for me to judge or condemn but i know a lot of them are a lie i can tell you by the authority of scripture and even by my experience sometimes it's just pressure that we men of god have so that we can add some mysticism to our life that will translate into respect but we don't have to lie the, the word of god itself can you know we have to be sincere with if you have not seen an angel you have not seen an angel it doesn't mean you are a demon if you have not if your eyes are not open your eyes are not open. it's a simple let's not make a fool of ourselves if you have not gone to heaven you will still go if you are in christ so i mean what is the lie for if you have not seen jesus it does not mean you are a demon the word of god is there the logos of god maybe this is a word for somebody who is already preparing to tell another lie now god is warning you in this conference it is unnecessary let's restore sanctity to priesthood if you have not had the encounter don't feel bad you are not a demon you can serve god with the integrity of scripture and live a life of that that is of impact hallelujah 
but it doesn't mean God does not give people experiences believe me when the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me I had an encounter directly with him and it changed my life it took me more than one year to recover I could not be myself again what is this how he entered my room is still a mystery I could look at any part of him forever this is the Jesus preachers were talking about this is the Jesus I sang and preached about now he'd come to me and I was like a, he was like a total stranger my God when you see him you don't need to tell people you've seen him what will happen to you ba? it will be clear to everybody that is not a human being you saw believe me when I tell you he didn't need a door to enter the creator the one who holds matter and he stood and I was watching him he did not tell me anything yet I was understanding what he was saying very strange mystery I understand what the Bible means when it says the entrance of your word gives light that was where I learned you've heard me say it that you do not have to talk to speak mm -hmm. spiritual transference can happen even without your mouth opening and the high point of that encounter is when the Lord himself stretched his hands towards me and a beam of light a beam of light entered into me as though it would kill me but it did not kill me because light does not kill the light of God and after that experience that was it this Bible opened from Genesis to Revelation that's it in another encounter I have shared it with you here that the Lord spoke to me and he said my son from today I will give you my presence as a gift and I'm in this vision and I see this being standing before me and he said this angel will walk with you and I said what is his name and he said he's called the angel of the Lord's presence this is the reason for some of these manifestations you see I'm taking time to share with you because of what is about to happen now so that you do not think that everybody went to collect power or charm there are people who fear God though not everybody is a demon or a false prophet or this no no it's important that I emphasize that hallelujah and the Lord made a statement he said to every city and every region and every nation that I will send you there must be someone in that meeting who the fire that came the lights that came from me to you you must transfer that light to them I have not failed in that assignment everywhere God grants me the privilege to go to there must be someone in that meeting who came for that meeting to receive more than a sermon that divine light that can open up destinies and right now ladies and gentlemen please help them my God there is a lady who will shout loud right now under the anointing and the power of God will begin to move please hold them now please hear me let me just give us a few instructions because we're getting straight to the ministry right now please if i do ask you to bring people out may i please request that you limit them from here down that way from here down that way let's respect his excellency the cabinet and the bishop i believe in honor are we in agreement on that so that we can also help the security but we're going to pray listen for as long as god has brought you here i want you to know for sure you are face to face with the glory and the grace of god that will turn your life in a way that you cannot imagine now the final way you receive the anointing is by impartation impartation is the process that transfers spiritual possibilities from a career to one who desires it impartation is real you can 
return back home with an anointing you did not come with impartation is possible the bible says he sent a word to jacob and it lighted upon him. every time god sends a word to jacob he intends it to be lightened upon israel philippians chapter 1 and verse 7 paul was mentoring the church in philippi and he said the the last sentence he says ye are all are partakers of my grace every time just help those under the anointing the spirit of god is already moving every time the anointing of the spirit is given to one man please hear me the goal is not to make superstars out of men of god believe me when i tell you the days of superstar christianity and some of this malhandling of the word of god with immaturity is coming to an end we must come to a point of maturity where we understand the purpose of the anointing the purpose of the anointing is not just to show that a man of god is anointed and he's great um hold on please just a moment if you are taking them out just take them i hope we have ushers now please hear me when it's time to minister whether you are an usher or not you see that there's a crowd of people please do help them so that we minimize anyone's injuring themselves and all of that this is not some pentecostal gibberish this is god stepping in over a territory and over a people hear me after tonight watch what happens in your state after tonight watch what happens in your church after tonight watch what happens in your destiny I've seen the power of God in my life I have seen the power of God from regions to regions I do not boast and claim to know everything for I am and remain a student myself in the school of the spirit but when it has to do with spiritual power believe me I know what I'm saying tonight there are two groups of people in this place number one there are those who will sit back and argue and say wow what a great man of God I'm impressed hearing you quote scriptures and this man looks like he's anointed and then not receive anything but there are others who came with hunger and said Lord God of heaven I missed it last year and I paid for it for one year now you have come again don't make the mistake of Jacob in chapter 28 Jacob had an encounter where his father had built an altar or his grandfather had built an altar and he did not have the discernment to maximize it he said the lord was in this place and i knew not the next 20 years of his life will be pain in the house of laban by the time we get to genesis 32 he was wiser he dismissed his wives his children and there came to him a man again he held him and said leave me for the day break it. he said i will not let you go unless you bless me and he said what is your name he said jacob he said thou shalt no longer be called jacob for as a prince you have had power with god and prevailed thou shalt be called israel and he blessed him and touched the whole of his thigh the bible says then the sun arose and he called the name of the place peniel for i have seen god face to face and my life is preserved there are preachers who will catch fire this night there are businessmen who will be restored this night hear me there are some of you in government god has a great destiny for you but the grace to take you there is not yet there takes more than campaign and more than this believe me uh -uh. until that grace is upon you you will only re be recycling pain there is an anointing called a king maker anointing no king anoints himself in the next two minutes i don't know how you are going to cry to god but i like you from the depth of your spirit in the next two minutes cry and say father that grace that must come upon my life to be a witness of your resurrection whether in ministry whether in business whether in politics i like you to pray from the depth of your heart
pray from the depth of your heart those following by television pray someone pray Mama pray It's time for you to carry a mantle Man of God Pray The power of God is resting on people now Please begin to bring them out Whether you are an usher or not Just help us Hello, Madonna. Ah, hello, Madonna. Hello, Madonna. Hello, Madonna. Whether you are an usher or not, if someone is under the anointing, please help bring them out and then you can return back to your seat. Please pray. That grace is falling on someone. It's time for a change of story. It's time for Saul to become Paul, even by the Spirit of the living God. Now the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We all with faces unveiled, beholding him as it is in the mirror we are changed from glory to glory in the name of jesus in the name of jesus now hear me Please, I want you to be sensitive. We are getting to the point of the ministration now. Whether you are inside or outside, the power of God comes upon someone close to you. Please help so that there is a reason why I ask that they bring them out. It's not for sure. Nakirmamasunanka Ubangiji Nenata ukaka sunanka Ubangiji kaisa yabo Nagir mama sunanka Ubangiji Now I'm seeing the number 31 And the Lord is taking away the spirit of delay The power of God is coming on them I decree and declare at the count of three everyone who has suffered delay here i stand by the god of heaven in partnership with all the graces here that devil must give way now at the count of three bring them out one two three i command that spirit go now go now go now delay we come against you in the name of Jesus, personal delays, corporate delays, institutional delays, I come by the road of a higher priesthood. I confront altars. I confront gates. In the name of Jesus Christ. hear me there are people here everything works for others until it gets to your turn the moment it gets to your turn mysteriously you don't seem to be able to step into certain blessings i stretch my hands let a mantle from heaven rest upon your life now help that man please rest upon your life now help that man my god help this woman the power of God is coming on you, madam. You will never be the same again.
Hallelujah. Bring them out. Now, the, the Lord is ministering to me to break the chains of untimely death. There are many families here. There is a track record burying loved ones before their time. Older parents burying the young ones. I don't know who is standing here and there is an altar of death against your life. But in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, that devil must let you go. I don't care how many years, for the Bible says, blotting out every handwriting and ordinance that spoke against us. Therefore, at the count of three, let the spirit of death leave you. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Release your destinies now. Help them, please. Release your destinies now. Untimely death over Taraba State. We command be banished in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, please hear me. I want to say something that I do not want you to find offensive. There is a spirit around the middle belt that stems right up to these regions that does not allow anything that is started well to last beyond one or two generations. You will find a responsible and successful father but there is no responsible son. We almost don't have third or fourth generation anything because it looks like there is a spirit that abhors sustainability of impact. I want to rebuke that spirit right now. In the name of Jesus, for every parent here, every captain of industry here, you will not labor for nothing in the name of Jesus. If there is any family here help them that has a child male or female that is giving the problem the parents problems they are prayed and fasted and counseled some of them were sent abroad and they returned back in a way that brought pain to the parents in the name of Jesus from this meeting may the angels of the Lord's presence go and fetch those children from the hand of Satan In the name of Jesus now hear me please I believe in deliverance so there are wicked spirits that will not let people go in one word you're in when I count three I want you to shout the name Jesus please hear me any altar that is not of God it must give way now at the count of three as you shout that name i don't care how long it has been that has tied you down and your family down tonight must be your night of breakthrough father i decree and declare it was this shout that brought jericho down a city whose gate was shut the bible says nothing will go out and nothing will come in are you ready to shout jesus every spirit that has tied you by ancestry by bloodline it's time for your liberty one two three shout jesus i command those devils go now help them go now go now go now go now i rebuke you release families release destinies release families release ministries release government release local governments release regions release senatorial districts we command those spirits give way now hallelujah 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 praise the name of the lord now please listen to me 
I'm about to pray for the sick. It is a terrible thing to come from a background where there is a legal access to powers of darkness that can hold sway your life and rubbish you and you are not able to manifest destiny. Let me tell you the truth. Some of you who are in government, it's not because you are here. I want you to mark what happens to you tonight. Believe me, your lives will change in a way that will surprise you. It is true. Hallelujah. Let me pray for the sick now. Hear me. I believe in the healing power of Jesus. I am a product of the healing ministry of Jesus. All those who have come out by the Spirit, I declare the legal hold of Satan over them. I stand in agreement and we stand as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are released now from every captivity. For the Bible says, even the lawful captives shall be delivered. I declare your release now. I declare your release now. Hallelujah. Now, please hear me. I want you to lay your hand anywhere you are trusting God for healing right now. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest. I want to pray for you. I believe in the power of God. Jesus is real. He really is. He's alive. I'm about to pray for you now all those outside and then those watching by television from any and every nation lay your hands right where and if you are with a sick person maybe in a hospital right now I want you to lay your hands creator of the universe what can you do what can't you do, Jesus? You are the name above every other name. What can't you change? What can't you change, Jesus? Creator of the universe. What can you do? What can you do, Jesus? I want to pray now. Most sicknesses are caused by spirits beyond the medical diagnosis. There are wicked spirits that plague human beings. Listen, hold on, please. Do you know why healing is important? I will tell you why. Healing is important because according to the law of creation, every human is only given one body per lifetime. You are not given two bodies per lifetime. You have only one body that is a legitimate host to you, the spirit man. And anytime that body is deteriorating, it is death making a proposal to your life. There is a requisite level of health that the body must have for the spirit to remain. If the body degenerates and deteriorates beyond that threshold level, the spirit will have to live in the event you call death. So, every time God brings healing, it is his proposal to your longevity and health so that you remain and have a body that legitimizes you to operate in this side of his kingdom healing therefore is more than a demonstration of power from a man of God healing is an expression of God's love and God's mercy and his determination to see you continue and remain until your course on earth is over now you can receive knowing what you are receiving please lay your hands and I pray for you When I shout the name of Jesus, I want you to agree with me. Now hear me. We may not have all the time, 
but then we may just take the first five testimonies just to honor Jesus there are dramatic miracles that will happen right now that have even already happened I'm going to pray as I rebuke those spirits I'm going to give you room to check yourself the moment you find out that a miracle has happened to you I want you to just come and stand in front here or here we we'll have a few of the pastors who will take you will take one or two testimonies and then we'll do a prayer on the request and then just speak over Taraba and we're done it will be a very quick walk hallelujah lay your hands there and let's pray now please lay your hands there in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Now hear me there is a man who is going to shout loud under the anointing the moment that happens the power of God to heal will begin to move these are the leadings of the Holy Spirit these are not things they are not fabrications of a man it's just the instruction God is giving me a gentleman a strong anointing now is coming upon him and at that shout the power of God is going to begin to now I can begin to pray Mm. I decree and declare right now every devil behind sicknesses and infirmities help them please my God I come against you in the name of he who died and rose again and I declare depart from the bodies of God's people now depart from the bodies of God's people now I decree and declare be healed in Jesus name be healed in Jesus name be healed in Jesus name blind eyes I command you to be open now deaf ears I command you to be open now those who came here with crutches and could not walk lift it up and begin to walk now in the name of Jesus Christ anybody who was brought on a stretcher life to your body right now in the name of jesus christ hiv be healed now cancer be healed now sugar diabetes be healed now all kinds of blood related diseases be cleansed now in the name of jesus There is a gentleman that God is healing you have something like a growth around your neck the power of God is touching you right now in the name of Jesus the Lord is showing me a lady or a woman you have suffered pile pile for a very long time the power of God is touching you right now heart palpitations be healed in the name of Jesus there are many people here I see according to my visions that have high blood pressure in Jesus name we command it to go down now there is a woman the Lord is showing me I don't know what is your medical diagnosis but they stopped you from eating salt they said you should not eat salt I don't know who that person is I bring the life and the power of Jesus to you right now there's someone you don't hear very well or is it completely you don't hear with your right ear the power of God is touching you now in the name of Jesus Christ lower back pain I declare be healed now there's someone your hands you're not able to move your fingers freely there's excruciating pain the power of God is resting upon you now now every other issue whether I mentioned it or not someone just right here just where i'm touching the severe pain that you've had there the power of god is touching you right now there is someone god is showing me you are a man of god when you stand on the stage to preach the moment you start shouting you start feeling dizzy almost as if you are losing breath it's a demonic thing be healed right now now whether I mention your issue or not 
I decree and declare be healed now outside be healed now online be healed now within the auditorium be healed now even for your family members scattered all around Taraba and the nations may the healing power of Jesus touch them right where they are in the name of Jesus now very quickly in one minute I want you to check yourself miracles have happening have happened and are happening the moment you find out something has happened to you courageously a pastor wave your hand people are coming let them see you and then begin to come let's take a few testimonies while that is happening very quickly can we have the prayer requests here if you are yet to submit your prayer request can you wave it please be seated for a few minutes god bless you let's have those who have been touched boldly courageously make your way to the front make your way to the front make your way to the front are you clapping for them jesus is touching people jesus is touching people god bless you for those coming from outside please allow them come those who have been touched by the power of god let's have a few testimonies his excellency already told us that jesus is a nigerian but that he resides in taraba so to witness the wonder working power of that jesus hallelujah very quickly please apostle oh, yes sir we have a miracle here yes sir this uh, this chap here had a pain in the right side of his his, his what's stomach. his name god love how long have you had this my friend since last year since last year where is the pain at my right hand side and now what happened to you bend down any pain bend down any pain are you giving jesus praise completely healed by the power of god there's a powerful testimony yes there, please Apostle. when you gave the word about a woman with pile a woman with pile yes she said the pile stopped and went to hell where it came from where it came mama from. how long have you had this let her talk for about two years now for two years two years yes. medically verified yes and now i even stood blood in the afternoon before coming here come again please help us with her mic I said, I even stood blood when I went to the toilet in the afternoon today before coming here and I came here with the pain and immediately we started praying. The pain just ceased. Can you imagine? I prophesy to you that these Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more forever. Yes, sir. This is a case of a stroke. He came all the way from Gimbu. He came he, all the way from Gimbu. Where is know. that? <laughs> okay, here in Taraba. Yes, sir, in Taraba. About seven. The mountain. Three. Yes, sir. You are this mountain people. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. He, he. Okay, uh, let him speak for himself. What happened to him? Very quickly. He had stroke. I, Please let him speak. I had a stroke. You came here with stroke. Yeah. You 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 are where? Give her the mic. Oh, He's your what? He's my father. He's your father. Yes. What couldn't you do, sir? Lift the hand. Look at this. Drop it down. Lift it up again. Help the lady. Drop it down. Oh, come on. Are you are you giving give Jesus glory? Are you saying miracle is beginning like to that? happen? Sir, walk. Try to walk. Walk. Look at this. He came here with a stroke. In the name of Jesus, perfection for you. Even by the power of the Holy Spirit in jesus name celebrate the lord oh dear the power of god is on his daughter yes please this is a drastic testimony he had a swollen in his throat a swelling but when you gave the word yes it took back to hell where it came back came completely from. how long my friend for four days now for four days plus okay and it's gone now yes sir. in jesus name it, it, it never returns to you again Amen. very quickly please There is a woman here for four years. You have not had helper. For four years, you have not had um, um, the fruit of the womb. I know there are many people, but this person, that's it, the power of God. Who is that person? Your life is about to change. Helper, helper, you don't please help them. 
I decree and declare the Lord has revealed this to me according to the time of life by next year you are returning with a baby boy this is what I've seen hallelujah who is Maimuna? I'm hearing a name Maimuna. is there someone with that name we don't have all the time we have to work with time so that um, but I'm hearing a name Maimuna. And for that person, the Lord is saying that he's bringing an end to captivity. Memuna. This is something that has to do with witchcraft over the family. I don't know where that person is, but in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that power of witchcraft is broken now. Yes, sir. This is the woman case. is crying. Yes, sir. What it's, happened? It's a case of 18 years. Of 18 years. Let her speak. Pain. My God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I've been suffering for a lower abdominal pain for 18 years. 18 years. <laughs> what couldn't you do? I've seen so many doctors. And right now, bend. Any pain? Nothing. Completely. Check yourself. Twist. Any pain? Any pain? Let's celebrate Jesus. This is a case of a feverish condition. The while while you were speaking, what happened to her? She had fever, severe fever. fever. Yes, and the fever is gone. gone. You heard the testimony of a dare. Was it a man of God or someone who testified as I came in that had a little baby? And the fever is gone now. In Jesus' name, I declare you are healed and perfected by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please, very quickly. Okay. Hallelujah. For the past five days, I have a soul. I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. My husband can testify to Where's that. your husband? Yes. Megida and Agage. Yes. Come. Yes. I couldn't sleep. Let's celebrate the I husband. I not sleep. I know Is what he I'm here? saying. Yes. And I came from the office. Straight from the office, very sick. You came from the office. Yes, very sick. Where is the sick. husband? Husband, is that true? Very, huh? Yes. And what happened to her now? I'm here. She's disappeared. Yes. Look at this. Help her, help her. The power of God is on her. In the name of Jesus Christ, I say it again. The Egyptians that followed you here, you will see them no more forever. hallelujah god bless you let's take two or three and then we'll head straight to yeah i was having ovarian cyst i went to the hospital ovarian after, cyst yes and i went for sky medically confirmed yes for how long ma it's about one year getting to two years now precisely yes and i went my mother prescribed i took medicine the pain still persists and they ovarian said, cyst yes uh-huh all my ovaries were affected all your ovaries yes you see how demonic the devil is you put yourself in this woman's shoes i'm not a woman and but you can imagine the kind of pain that this our dear sister must have been going through what happened now Immediately when I came, when you shouted that there is a woman that has pain, the pain just disappeared. Press your stomach. Any pain? Any pain? You see, ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. Ladies and gentlemen, this is more than just showing that Joshua Selman is powerful. I will keep telling you. Are we together now yes this is revealing that jesus is still lord and that if he can do this kind of miracle is it a job he cannot give you if he can do this kind of miracle is it honor or restoration he cannot bring in your life so more than just looking at a man as a superstar i want your attention to be directed as jesus who is the king of kings and the lord of lords we are only privileged vessels to be used by him do not forget this hallelujah my sister it will never return to you again in the name of jesus yes please amen as daddy and as that one is feeling best 
I'm not sure we can hear her. Whether English or Hausa, whichever is convenient for her. But this spirit that I've been passing through this infection problem for the past 11 years. I can tell that it is 11 school. years. Yes, I can tell that it is school for the school. I better go make your school it work. I'm going to be hospital sure. now. I'm not sure I can. What, what did she say, Please. sir? What I'm feeling now is Yes, sir. Huh? She's talking about the power of God has come upon her. She's feeling. Ah, okay, okay. In the name of Jesus, look at me, my dear. I decree and declare liberty for you, eh? and complete healing for you. In Jesus' name, I pray. God bless you. That's the end of it. Let me get that little girl's testimony. Girl, yes. I had to take look at this smart Taraba babies. Let's celebrate our children. Look how composed and intelligent and smart. Some of you cannot stand in front like this and speak. You know what I'm saying. Yes, my dear. What is your name, by the way? My name is Sophia Michael. Can you see that? Taraba, don't tempt us to bring our children here for school. Yes, what happened to you? I had toothache since 2018. You had toothache? Yes. Since 2018? Yes. And what happened to you now? See, when you pray, when you said we should pray, and I, be, I began to pray, suddenly it disappeared, and I'm not feeling any pain again. Remember a beautiful song we used to sing? Jesus loves the little children all the children of the world red brown yellow black and white they are precious in his sight jesus loves the little children yes please ear pain. if they can't talk help them she Don't had them on the ear pains ear pain yes sir baby what is your name Give a good deal. what's the name Give a gift good what happened to you your ears it was paining you before and now it's gone hallelujah it will never return again in jesus name um okay let's let's just have one maybe one let's just have two of the children then one adult the rest can testify tomorrow so that we'll wrap up yes go ahead i have a throat pain and right now what happened baby when you said that i should pray i pray to you and the team disappear and i was still on cross let's celebrate our beautiful baby in the name of jesus you are healed by the power of god yes madam praise the lord i was having palpitation and a kind of heart let's attack. just have some silence so that yes ma and a kind of heart attack if i hear somebody heart attack? yes if i hear somebody shout i would just feel shock a okay. kind of panicking and always my heart is always breathing abnormal and right now what happened i'm to you? feeling better now completely yes. it never returns to you in the name of jesus now hear me whether you had the opportunity to testify or not inside and outside we agree and we declare that your miracles are permanent in jesus name i pray how many of you believe in the power of answered prayers the bible says unto thee that answers prayers shall all flesh come so may i request if you are not tired those who are already standing keep standing those sitting please sit let's honor them just be sure to stretch your hand whether you are sitting or standing stretch your hand prophetically as we pray over the request go ahead declare as you are stretching your hands this is the most accurate representation of your desires and the bible says what things soever ye desire it says when ye pray believe that thou receivest it and thou shall have it if we still have some of the requests please bring them very quickly we're about to pray hallelujah go ahead stretch your hands i'm going to bow my knees and pray over the requests and ask the lord himself to visit taraba you love taraba and you love everybody here please i'd like you to pray in one minute
in the name of Jesus shout a believing amen yeah. father I stand in agreement with every man and woman of God in this place and under this corporate anointing we declare every request that has been dropped before this altar let it be turned to a testimony let it be turned to a testimony let it be turned to a testimony in the name of jesus christ hear me every human agent who must come in partnership with god for this request to be answered we decree and declare may they come forth for your sake in the name of jesus christ and anyone who says over his dead body for this request to be answered in the name of jesus christ the earth will open and swallow them I stand prophetically upon this request anything that has stood upon you and brought you pain and tears this night here in Taraba under the influence of the grace that is upon this assembly and this ministry and end comes to it now Taraba lift up your heads all ye gates and be ye lifted ancient doors i speak to the north the south and the east of taraba every blood sucking spirit whether as terrorism whether as manipulations of darkness the earth opens to swallow them now i decree and i prophesy there must be peace in Taraba. There must be progress in Taraba. There must be advancement in Taraba. We use His Excellency as a point of contact and all the members of cabinet to pray for all those who are serving in whatever capacity. In the name of Jesus, on account of this program tonight, you will not fail. I pray for every home here represented in the name of Jesus the sound of mourning and shame comes to an end we pray for every church that names the name of Christ in Taraba even though this is through the platform of the Anglican communion but they have so graciously opened up their hearts to include everyone here therefore I declare every altar in taraba that preaches the name of christ let it be on fire for jesus <laughs> prophetically we attract the attention of investors both local and international to taraba in the name of jesus hear me if there is anything planted in your soil to destroy the prophetic destiny of this state i stand by the privilege of priesthood in the name of jesus it is hereby nullified the spirit of untimely death that keeps killing the youth male and female that evil report comes to an end now hear me i pray for every elderly person here as a point of contact to our elders in Taraba, anybody from 60 years above, we enter a covenant of life for the elderly in Taraba. There will be no longer untimely death. In the name of Jesus, let me pray for the youth. In the name of Jesus, right from Taraba, we export you as agents of change. Go across the globe educationally politically in ministry in business become captains of industry in the name of jesus christ the spirit of cultism prostitution moral decadence we bury permanently over taraba 
finally I decree and declare that by reason of this conference let Taraba become a light and a beacon even across the entire north and the nation in the name of Jesus Christ we pray all this in the name of the Father in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit turn to someone by your left and right and congratulate them this is a new me it's a new Taraba it's a new season of the supernatural in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah now I want to appreciate one more time his excellency and the bishop and everyone who has granted me the privilege to be here in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit I pray and I decree and declare that the Lord bless you you will go from glory to glory in Jesus name Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.